beginning of a new work week. President David Granger bestows Order of Roraima on Barbados Prime Minister and APNU AFC Coalition, a government for all Guyanese. Welcome to InfoHub. It's Monday, February 3. It's 27 days to general elections and 21 days to our Golden Jubilee Republic anniversary. Thank you for joining us. President David Granger today bestowed the Order of Roraima on Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Motley. The Honourable Mia Moore Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados, has been conferred with Guyana's second highest national award, the Order of Roraima. The constitution of the Orders of Guyana provide that any distinguished citizen of another country who has rendered valuable services to Guyana or whom for any other reason the state wishes to honour may be appointed as an honorary member of the Order of Roraima. This year is the Golden Jubilee, and it is significant that this dear land of Guyana pays special honor to a distinguished citizen of CARICOM who has rendered outstanding service and valuable service to, to the Caribbean region. In conferring the award on the Honorable Prime Minister, His Excellency President David Granger noted the friendship between the two countries. The conferral of Guyana's Order of Roraima on Barbados' Prime Minister exemplifies the essential elements of the historical fraternal relations between our two Caribbean states. This investiture is richly symbolic for Guyana, for Barbados, and for the Caribbean. Our two states pioneered the founding of the Caribbean Free Trade area, Carifta, in 1965, prior to their independence. Our two states both gained their independence from Britain the following year, 1966. Our two states uniquely established a joint high commission in London soon after independence. Our two states' prime ministers, Forbes Burnham and Errol Barrow, were among the four founding fathers who signed the treaty establishing the Caribbean community in Chaguramas, Trinidad and Tobago in 1973. I first simply want to say thank you because I accept this honor not on my own behalf, but on behalf of the people of Barbados. I'm conscious that it is the people of our country in Barbados over the course of centuries that have worked with the people of Guyana. And indeed, Mr. President, you have outlined quite well the various areas of coincidence in which our two countries have partnered. The path of our two countries is inseparable. And I look forward to our being able to build, Mr. President, on that relationship because it is only in working together on a common mission that we shall achieve for our people. We are committed to working with you on a bilateral basis, apart from our also commitment as colleagues within the community of sovereign nations, otherwise known as the Caribbean community. The visiting delegation will hold a media conference later on at the CARICOM headquarters. For InfoHub, Felicia Valenzuela. His Excellency David Granger on Sunday evening assured residents of Rose Hall Quarantine that his government will never turn its back on any Guyanese as his administration is all for the people. Residents in the East Burbies Quarantine region were told that they can expect a more robust agriculture sector when the coalition government retains office after the March 2 general and regional election as the administration will be able to salvage the region from the stranglehold of the opposition PPP. We cannot have a government that is being resisted at all levels by the opposition. We cannot have an RDC that is resisting the central government. We cannot have an RDC that is not supporting our villages. And this is what has been happening in Region 6. We cannot have an RDC 
which is only looking after red villages and is not looking after green villages. We cannot have an IDC which does not bring development to all of the people of this region. President Granger said that Region 6, which is bigger than Belgium, should have been one of the leading regions in Guyana. However, left in the hands of the previous administration, there is much to be desired. We do not discriminate between red villages and green villages and yellow villages. We ensure that all of the people in this region, in this country, receive the benefits of development. We build consensus. We build institutions where everybody could share. And it is in this coalition, Region 6, we'll find salvation in our decade of development. Taking his message of restored quality of life for all, President Granger reiterated that squatter settlements in the country will be a thing of the past under his government. He reminded also of the plans his administration has for former workers of the Guyana Sugar Corporation through the establishment of a state land resettlement commission. Meantime, Prime Minister the Honorable Moses Nagamutu told residents of Woodley Park, Mahaikabur Beast and surrounding communities that the upcoming general and regional elections are key to securing the future of their children and the nation. Do not gamble with your children's future. Do not gamble with our country's future. Put our country in safe, clean and honest hands. Return the APNU AFC to office. Addressing an energetic crowd, the Prime Minister pointed to the composition of the coalition government. He noted that the developments achieved under the administration lie in the fact that the government includes representatives from all of the geographic regions, ensuring the needs of all Guyanese are addressed. But this is a multi-ethnic coalition. This is a rainbow coalition for all the people. This is a coalition that was born out of destiny. And so together we have developed a team spirit. We have developed a team spirit. And we have seen in the last four odd years how destiny has helped to change Guyana for the better. I know that it is possible that we could come together from different political parties and persuasion and from different ethnicities and races and religion and cultures and it is possible that we could unite and we could take our country to greater heights. The Prime Minister reiterated his call for persons to judge the government on its track record of transformation over the last four years when going to the polls on March 2nd. For InfoHub, Rebecca Ganesh. The government has engaged the Russell Bauxite Company on the way forward following the company's announcement to terminate 326 Guyanese workers. Minister of Social Protection, the Honorable Amna Ali, and Minister within the Ministry, the Honorable Keith Scott, along with Chief Labor Officer Charles Ogle, met with Executive of the Russell Bauxite Company to iron out the way forward in relation to the company's announcement to terminate 326 Guyanese workers. Following a lengthy meeting at the Ministry's Lamaha office, Minister Ali deemed the move disrespectful and the government is demanding that the company reconsider its position. And we are advocating a peaceful, uh, consensual um, decision on this matter. We don't want any side to lose. We want both sides to win. And I can tell you that of great concern is the workers, workers, because it is not easy for 326 people to be laid off. So our first demand is that we are asking for all of them to be rehired. And then we can take it from there. She noted that the administration will continue to engage the government on the matter with the view that representatives will return with practical recommendations. I don't think we are enjoying good company with Ruth at the moment. 
but I believe that we can engage each other. We tried this morning, but they are fixed on their position. And um, give them a little time to cogitate so that they can come back with some real recommendations. Minister Keith Scott said the company did not inform the Labor Department or the union about the move to terminate the workers. He said this move by the company is unacceptable. You have erred again and it's legal to send home people without let, letting us know and without letting the union... situation is not adequate. It, it, it is. Our position... It's an illegal why, they sent to us? why did you not send to us? You're around the table now. Why did you not send to us properly? Those things um, is what I will never accept. Rusal is the world's second largest aluminum company. It owns 90% of the Bauxite Company of Guyana Incorporated, BCGI. Seneca Thorne, InfoHub. When the news returns, e-learning oil and gas training courses commence and well-known fashion designer launches Costume Heritage Band. Details of these stories and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education, along with the Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training and PetroEd, today hosted an orientation exercise for persons who applied for the e-learning oil and gas training courses. The event was hosted at the Arthur Chang Conference Center on Monday morning. Addressing the successful applicants, Minister of Education, the Honorable Dr. Nicolette Henry, highlighted the importance of technology in the education sector. We're using technology in this country, and if we use it properly, our children will have a bespoken education. I must take the time to congratulate all of the successful applicants for this, for this training. You are the first cohort to be trained in this area. Director of the Department of Energy, Dr. Mark Bino, noted that these are excited times to be a Guyanese. He congratulated the Education Ministry and its partners for providing these training opportunities. In this realm, therefore, capacity building to ensure that Guyanese are, one, prepared for the transformation that the oil and gas discoveries will bring and the effects therefrom, and two, to ensure that a greater proportion of Guyanese are contributing to the local content mix remains a commitment of the Department of Energy. Meanwhile, Director of CTVET Floyd Scott said his organization's focus is to facilitate development possibilities, occupational and skills access to every region in Guyana. This training you're about to embark on will be conducted in two parts. The basic principles of petroleum and the introductory courses for drilling industry. The trust of the courses is to raise awareness of the oil and gas industry and the behavioral and cultural change which is required in the oil and gas sector. The course will commence immediately after the applicants receive their profile login details. Each applicant would have to acquire a 70% pass to elevate to a higher level. For InfoHub, I am Kellen Rover. Eastern Airlines getting ready for its March 5 inaugural direct flight from New York to Guyana with giveaways and diverse options for its new market. Manasseh Williams, who is one of the lucky winners of two free round-trip direct flights to New York, praised the arrival of Eastern Airlines. So again, as a travel agent, this airline is, it has tremendous deals and tremendous benefits because one suitcase free and the suitcase at 70 pounds. That's really great towards other airlines that has 50 pounds and all airlines that we book right now, they're not giving any free suitcases. Another ticket winner welcomed the increased competition. When all these airlines are coming together, at least we'll have competition and we'll have good fears for the Guyanese public. Eastern Airlines branding agent noted the company values the Guyana market. You can get a plane flight from New York to Chicago or go New York to London. Those are just well-traveled places. Eastern Airlines is all about going to underserved markets around the globe and opening that up with low-cost fares, non-stop, 
with liberal baggage policy so that we can actually serve more of the world. So Marketing Director of Eastern Airlines Josh Bustos told members of the media the airline's paperwork has been finalized. Eastern Airlines is poised to offer non-stop flights between New York and the Chedi Jagan International Airport for as low as $169. US Senior citizens' discounts will also be available. Though the airline is cashless, meaning all purchases are done electronically, the marketing director indicated that other avenues for ticket purchases are being explored. Shaquille Bourne for InfoHub. With the vision to make the 50th Republic anniversary celebration better than ever, well-known fashion and costume designer Nelson Nurse launched a costume heritage band that took onlookers' breath away on Sunday evening at the Kitty Seawall Bandstand. As the models began to strut their stuff so that the onlookers can get a better look, but Vanilla's 2020 Soka entry, I'm 592, playing in the background, the atmosphere was absolutely perfect, with the colorful yet intriguing piece which emphasizes the 592 concept. This is actually celebrating my 17th year in Mashimani celebration on the road. And as part of the Republic celebration, I decided to bring up my band. Yes, the concept is I am 592 because we're celebrating everything I need. Um, Mash is actually our own and our unique gift to the world. So I just want to add to that festival and make it. I don't see the need for us to create another festival when we can make Mash better. He added that this year is his time to shine, not only on the road for February 23rd, but to cement his name in the designing industry. Of course, this eye-catching costume will be available to all who wish to join Nielsen's band very soon. Well, we're, we're going to start registration in a few days. Um, my Facebook page is Nielsen Andre Nurse. We'll post information there, but eventually we'll have a Facebook page to the band. But the band, the band camp is actually in the Sapphire Exhibition Complex, and we're there from Monday to Friday. Since jumping into the designing arena in 2007, this experienced designer has created costumes for the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Natural Resources, among others. Nielsen is also part of the Guyana Fest 592 Village, which will provide creators the platform to show that they have what it takes. Neil Rudiman, InfoHub. As we prepare for Elections Day on March 2, if you have not done so as yet, check to ensure your name is on the revised list of electors. Voting is your democratic right. That's all for today. Connect with us on all our social media platforms, including WhatsApp, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.